Hey guys, continuing the rating climb. We're 481, about to cross the 500 mark. Here we go. So Scandinavian defense, easiest thing to do is just take it. And when they capture with the queen, we will gain a tempo of bringing out our knight. All right, so they just go back, which is pretty solid for, for black. Let's develop both knights. Probably going to play d4, get the bishops out, castle, and keep it simple. Opponent plays f6. So as soon as I see a move like that, um, I've said it before, you know, this diagonal, I'm going to keep an eye on. Also this diagonal. There's some weaknesses that are created here because of this move. Now, I don't see anything immediately, but I am going to keep an eye there. Let's go ahead and actually play bishop c4 and immediately kind of try to take advantage of some of those weaknesses. I'd like to move my knight potentially and, and think about this move, but i um, just going to kind of keep that in the back. Actually, now might be a good time. So let's think about this. If I capture this and black recaptures, I do have queen h5 check, and there's kind of a common tactic here of after g6, I can capture here and fork both of these pieces. Question for you guys watching the video, though. There's one move that black has in that situation that I'm afraid of. Can you figure out what it is? So just to recap, takes, takes, queen h5 check, g6, takes here with the fork. What am I afraid of? If you had a chance to look at that, what I'm afraid of is that after this happens, black can play queen e7, which actually pins the queen to my king, so I won't be able to get the rook. So that's uh, kind of the only thing that I don't love about that line. And so with that in mind, I think I'm going to castle. And now I would be comfortable playing that, but I think right there it was actually just going to be trading a knight for two pawns, and then the queen trade would have been forced. I would probably go into an endgame, just, just down that material. So doesn't quite work in this case, but I am keeping my eye. And now, now it's a different story, because now the same line... Except if queen e7 happens, guess what? There's no pin, and I'll simply take the rook, okay? So now I am going to play it. You can see how that subtle difference of castling uh, determined whether or not I was going to go for this line. And of course, if, if black doesn't block with g6, the king's in trouble. If it goes here, I have an immediate checkmate. If it goes over here, still probably going to be hunting the king, and I'm happy with that. And so g6 was kind of the only move I was worried about, but now we do have... The follow-up, which is actually going to be a triple fork on these, these pieces, okay? See exactly what I was talking about. Queen to e7, if my king was still here, uh, I would have been pinned, right? But I'm not, and so I am able to take this, this piece. I can also take this one, but rooks are better than bishops, so I will take the rook with the check. And after king here, we actually have a nice little tactic. It's um, removing the guard. I believe is the term. We're going to bring the bishop in. Oh, he doesn't uh, do that. Okay, well, I'll just take it. And here's a checkmate. So kind of like the four-move checkmate. If you get the queen on f7, uh, the game is over. So there we go. Let's play a new game. A 5-11. All right. Let's play e5. We're just mirroring the pawns. Let's defend. And all right, let's go for the two knights defense. We'll see if our opponent... Okay, our opponent does not go for the fried liver. So this is a line I covered on the channel before in a video capturing here and the point is we give up the piece so that we can fork these guys and get it right back and it actually turns out to be a very nice position for us so i will take this and this is an interesting moment because at first glance it looks like we might be in trouble there's two pieces lined up here it's pinned we can't move it um, of course we could defend but there's also an aggressive move here that i want to there's actually two aggressive moves that i want to look at Queen to d5 and queen to g5. Both of these have different ideas. This one, the point is we're forking these pieces. And then if the, let's just say the bishop takes, we would simply take back here. We'd be hitting the knight. And I don't know where the knight's going to go to. If the knight takes, I could again take this way and be hitting the bishop. Or I could actually just take the bishop. So a lot of options. And then also queen g5, the idea is that if this happens, yeah, I probably wouldn't go for this line. but it, could get pretty wild. I think after looking at that, I do like the queen d5 one better. So let's go for this but a very complicated and wild position already. Okay, wow. What a move by my opponent. Um, very, very clever idea of basically saying, I'll defend my knight. If you try to take my bishop, um, I will come over here and try to checkmate you. And... Uh, quite a few things to think through here. So in a position like this, 
what I'm going to do is kind of start with the obvious moves. So the what is the obvious moves here? Capturing one of these two pieces, right? Um, if I take the knight, what's going to happen? Well, queen takes, and can I recapture? No, I cannot because it's pinned. So that would be a huge blunder. So I can immediately eliminate that move. What about taking here? Um, well, what's white most likely going to do? I think it's pretty obvious. They're going to take here with the queen. I'm going to have to move over, and then what's the situation looking like? I don't see an immediate move for white. They could take here, which would kind of just be a trade. They might try to push this pawn forward and unleash the bishop, which is a little bit scary, but I would have some time to react. Um, so definitely thinking about taking the bishop. Now, do I have any other moves? Well, what about the move g6? Because I'm noticing that the queen uh, would either have to move, or if yeah, white couldn't really sacrifice that, they would lose the queen. So they would have to move the queen away, and then I could probably capture one of these pieces, and I gained a little tempo on the queen. So I think that's probably the better move. This also looks okay, but it is a bit scary allowing the queen to come in, and then if after this pawn moves, like, I have to watch out for the threat here. So rather than deal with all of that, I think g6 is probably the move that I'm going to play. So g6, but a very tricky position. Surprising move by my opponent. Uh, that's pretty pretty good for a 500 rated player to be thinking that aggressively, honestly. Okay, so here we can't take with the queen because we will lose it. So we have to recapture this way. And we still have the attack on the queen and the knight. It looks to me like um, queen g5 is probably the only move for white. Save the queen, defend the knight. Um, but I do have an idea against that. And so let's see if that's what, what white is going to do. He does play that. Very, very solid. All right, so let's see. Which one do I want to do? This one attacks the queen right away. It's probably going to have to go back to here or here. And then maybe I could follow up with bishop d6. Or I could just immediately play this. Put the pressure on the knight. Also threatens the fork. Yeah, I think that's maybe that's better. So let's play bishop g7. Um, and white has to figure out how they're going to deal with the threat on the knight. D4 and F4 probably are the only moves, but you do have to watch out for en passant as well as this fork here. And I don't know how white's going to save everything. Okay, wow, interesting move. So they try to counterattack my queen. Um, so how do I deal with both of these things at the same time? Well, I save my queen and I capture the knight with my queen. And so there we go. We get the piece and now we're just in a winning position. All right, let's complete the trade. All right, so um, let's finish our development is what I'm thinking about doing. Let's go bishop e6, develop and attack at the same time. Also gives me the option to castle either direction. And we'll see what white's going to do first. Okay, they're attacking this, giving up the pawn. I think... Um, I don't think I want to take it because it looks like after the rook takes, there's a fork and I'm going to be losing a piece. So f5 is a move that comes to mind. Um, or just castling and getting my king out of this the line of fire here. So pretty good move by my opponent, actually. Let's go ahead and play f5. We'll defend it. But d3 and f3 would be a, sh would be a pretty good move. Yes. And I can't really capture because of this. So... I think, um, what's the best thing to do here? I think I'll go ahead and capture this pawn. And after this happens, I'm going to get my bishop out of the line of fire with a check. And then I'll either uh, probably castle this way with the plan of recapturing the pawn like that. I think that looks like a good, a good idea. But it's, it just, you, you do have to be careful when your king is in line, right? If I were to make a casual move here and just like, let's say, capture this, I'm in trouble. The rook's going to capture, bam, hit that, bam, hit that. It's also pinning it to my king. So I do have to watch out for that. So let's go here, check, save the bishop, and then we'll deal with the king next move. I'm going to go this way. Okay, so let's do that. We'll castle king side. We can recapture with the rook, double up rooks, and we have a nice aggressive position here on, on white's king. All right, that looks to be a free pawn, so let's go ahead and take that. 
I'm not worried about this one because I can capture with a pawn and defend my bishop. Normally you have to be careful lining up your pieces like that, but in this case I see um, I see a way out. Okay, I will take it with the rook, and again, I'm not worried about this because there's a back rank threat here on, on white's king, so the rook can't actually leave and capture me even if this were to happen. So the same plan, I'm gonna bring this rook over, double up, and we have the ability to come down here and deliver the checkmate on White's king uh, if they don't stop that. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and trade. Just because we are up the piece, trading makes our life easier. And we'll bring this rook over, threatening the back rank checkmate. So I'm leaving this intentionally because I have a bigger threat, which is checkmate on F1 if White were to capture this. So they have to deal with that, maybe something like H3, bringing the rook back, and then we will save the bishop at that point. They do play that. All right, so let's go ahead and trade. Remember when you are ahead a significant amount of material, like a full piece in this case, trading, generally speaking, makes your life easier. So that's what I'm gonna do. We'll take it with check. And now I'm gonna try to think of a, how do I wanna deal, you know, deal with this attack? Is there like a safe place that I can put my bishop? Or can I attack something? And so this square looks very nice for my bishop because uh, it's defended by the pawn. It's right you know, in the center, attacking a lot of, controlling a lot of important squares. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So I'll just go here, relocate it to there. Notice the important thing about this square is that none of the pawns can attack that square. So that's kind of an important feature. This square would not be as good because b3, a4, and I have to move again right? d5, and I don't have to worry about moving that bishop right now. I can just leave it sit there and attack stuff. Okay, so speaking of attacking stuff, I see the opportunity to put my rook on the second rank. Line up here seems to be a very annoying threat for white to deal with. Only move that I see is rook to g3, but then the rook is kind of taken out of the game and it's stuck defending the pawn. And I can, okay, well, they don't do that, so I will just take the pawn. But if they did that, I was going to go ahead and start bringing my king, you know, over to probably this side of the board um, and hunt down these pawns. But in this case, we'll just take that. Okay, and now I'm looking for a checkmate, actually. Whenever you see your opponent's king and there's not a lot of squares that are available, you want to start thinking about, do you have any checkmating ideas? So if I push this pawn check, the king goes here, check, the king is going to be able to escape. So how can I prevent that? Well, uh, maybe bring my king up. So let's go king g7. Now I'm threatening check, checkmate. And if the rook comes down, I can come here and I'm threatening checkmate this way. So I don't know if that's an easy threat for white to deal with. Yes, they can play the rook there, but then I can still go check and I'm winning the rook and don't really see too many other options for white, any other options for white for that matter. Okay, so they don't see that and we do have the checkmate with the pawn there. All right, good game. Almost 500, 497, here we go. All right, let's play e5 again. Let's defend. And let's see what white's gonna do. Okay, so they play the Rui Lopez. Um, one option that you have here is what's called the Berlin defense, where you just bring this knight out right away. And this is a super solid opening. This is, you'll see this a lot at the top levels. Um, playing this, you can actually capture this way and it looks like I'm losing a pawn. But if white were to capture this, there's this follow-up queen to d4 move and you actually get your pawn right back and you get an aggressive place, placement for your queen. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna pin the knight. And if white attacks us, I'm gonna try to illustrate, yes, perfect. So I'm gonna illustrate what's called the, um, the fishing pole trap. And essentially what it is, is you play the move h5. And if, yeah, if the opponent takes you, you capture with the pawn and it unleashes your rook. And now you basically try to get your queen to come over and deliver the checkmate. So that's what we're gonna look to do. Now we have to be a little careful here that we don't give uh, white the option to defend and save themselves. So let's think through this carefully. How do we wanna do this? So um, moving the knight and then bringing the queen here is one option. The only thing I'm worried about is if I, let's just say, capture this 
What if the queen takes? Does Is that going to mess up my plan? Looks like it kind of is. So let's see if we can think of a different way to do this. So queen to d6. The point is that if the knight moves, we have checkmate back there. There is going to be d4. And so is that something that I'm okay with? I can also go queen to d4 myself, try to attack the knight this way. Where's the knight going to go if I do that? There's a lot of ways we can approach this. Let's actually go with queen to d4. I think, oh, uh, there's, there's knight takes g4. Do I really want to allow that? Hmm. Yes, interesting. The, the only issue here is there's bishop f4. And if the bishop gets to f4, it can actually really defends pretty nicely this. So, um, hmm. <laughs> All right, we'll play queen to d4. This also sets up for me to castle queen side. Um, and I think I think that this isn't the ideal situation for the fishing pole trap, but this is kind of the general idea. You give up that piece, it opens up the rook, and you look for checkmates. There's a different version of it, actually, where I think the knight is not on f6. I think that's the difference. Because if the knight wasn't on f6, I would just immediately go queen here, and the game is over. And that's kind of what I was trying to do. And I, just, I guess I forgot that the knight was blocking. You know, white just blunders the knight. So we're basically right back uh, into a winning position. But yeah, I kind of misplayed that a little bit. Just to illustrate right here. Yeah, I think it's if this knight was like back here is kind of the standard trap. And then you bring the, the queen over and that. Anyway, it works out this way for us. Let's keep going. That's a good idea to keep in the back of your mind. The fishing pole trap, it's very dangerous. And we did cross 500, so all right, here we go. Okay, looks like a Karo Khan. We're just gonna get the center and we're just gonna defend with our knight. And we're ready to recapture. Okay. Um, Let's just go ahead and trade. We'll just keep it simple. Trade off the pawn, develop our pieces. Okay, well, let's play bishop e2. We'll just go ahead and break the pin right away so that our knight is free to move. Our opponent does trade it. So now we have this bishop hitting the d5 pawn. I'm probably going to castle next move. Yep, I think we go ahead and castle. Probably will bring our rook to the open, the half open file, I should say. Go ahead and do that. We are threatening this pawn now. Um, so this pawn is pinned, so that's not defending. So we could take, take, take. I'm just wondering what happens after the check here. Looks like there's a nice little tactic where black actually does come out on top. So this is a bad move. Uh, and the reason it's a bad move is it weakens these squares. So I think I'd like to take advantage of that right away. And I'm going to play the move bishop to h6. And this is a really annoying move because it prevents black from castling. So remember, the king cannot pass through check on the way to castle. And so that just kind of guarantees that black's king is going to be stuck in the center for at least another few moves. Black could move these and castle queenside. That at least gives me two moves to potentially try to attack the king. Okay, so black is trying to get rid of my bishop, but in doing so, they actually trapped their rook. And so we'll play bishop g7, and the rook is now stuck, and we'll simply take it next move. Okay, um, what's the threat? Well, that's defended. Maybe the queen is, is trying to come over here at some point later and, and threaten checkmate, but we'll have time to deal with that, so I'll go ahead and take the rook. I also still have this pin, and I'm looking at this pawn right here. Now might be a good time to take this next move, depending on what black is going to do. Okay, so we have this, we have this. Both look like pretty good options. Um, this one maybe looks a little bit better to me, so I'll take this one with the knight. The reason is after I take here with the rook, king's probably going to go to d7. I have to waste some time with my rook. Um, and so this way, I think I'll just keep that move for later. And, and go ahead and get my knight a little bit closer to the action. Okay, so now I think this is a good time to play this move. It's a fork on these pieces. So if the king simply moves, we're going to take the bishop. Same thing here. And so probably the bishop needs to go back, but then it opens up this square for a fork, and it doesn't look good for black.
you can see the importance of castling and bringing your rooks to the open or half open files um, where the king is. It's very, very dangerous. All right, let's go ahead and take three piece. Still have a lot of things that are being attacked uh, that black has to be careful for. Okay, so let's count here. One, two, three, four defenders. We have three attackers, so we can't quite take that, although maybe we can, because if you look carefully, this knight can't actually move. So if I were to take here, this knight has to capture, then we take. Again, the knight can't really move. If the queen takes, I'm happy because I'm getting a queen. And so even though it doesn't really look like it, I think we actually can take that. Probably take with the knight or the bishop. Since my bishop is kind of stuck in the corner, maybe I should just take with the bishop. Maybe then actually maybe the knight first so that I can follow up with the bishop, which forks these guys. It probably doesn't matter, but I'll go ahead and take with the knight. And whenever you have pins, it a lot of times opens up tactics just like this. And so here we can see, uh, even though I lost my knight, I'm going to get a rook, which is actually a good trade for me. Okay, so is there a threat that we need to worry about? Well, these are being attacked, but um, the queen is not assisting the knight, so I don't have to worry about that. I could also just take the knight. It is under fire. My rook is under attack, so I probably want to deal with that. Um, what's the easiest way to do this? Probably let's just throw in a check, save the rook, and then maybe we take this next move. So notice how I was just kind of identifying all the different things that were going on in the position, the, the fact that my rook was attacked, Fact that I could take the knight, you know, the, was my king safe, and then decided to play uh, this move. And here we go. Now I can take that, and at the same time, it defends my rook. And so that's great. We're setting up now to probably bring the queen over, and there should be a checkmate soon to follow. Okay, so like I mentioned, I'm going to bring the queen. And, um, Start looking for checkmates here. Okay, I don't see one just yet. I can't go there. I can't go here. Um, I can't go there because the queen. You do have this. Ah, and there you go. So there's the checkmate. So you keep looking at your different options. Make sure you, you know, check out all the options before you just dismiss it. Um, and here we, we see a good example of there's the checkmate. Queen can now come down. And that's game over. Okay, 515. Play another one. All right, we're going to play e4. And maybe we'll try to play a different opening this game just to kind of mix it up. Try to play a gambit or something. Okay, um, so there's one gambit here. It's not really a good gambit as far as I wouldn't play it at the top level, but anything below like 1800. This is a probably a fun one to play. But you give up the pawn. The idea is you can sacrifice your bishop here and then come out with a queen check to win back the knight. Okay, so you're going to see what I'm talking about. And I'll show you why it's not really a good opening as well. But um, it's, it's, it's annoying for black, and they have to kind of know what they're doing or they can get into trouble. So you do this. And then you come over and you take back your piece. Now, why is this tricky for black? Well, because they can't castle. Their king is kind of exposed. They have to be careful. However, if they're smart and they know what they're doing, uh, they can play bishop g7, rook f8, put their king back on g8. And it's kind of like they castled. And it's actually a better position for black. So that's why it's not really an opening that I would play at the top level. But um, lower rated players tend to have a hard time with this. And so it's just a good one I wanted to show you. Okay, and we see a blunder here which um, is pretty straightforward. We just take the rook. Okay, identify the threat. Uh, packing this pawn, not really a huge concern. I'm going to go ahead and take the piece. And I do see that after this, I can castle, get my king away, and save my uh, bishop, and everything is fine. So I am planning ahead for that, uh, even if it looks like I might be ignoring it. Okay, I actually didn't see that. Um, but we can simply sidestep. That is a good move from our opponent because it forces us to not be able to castle. 
um, but that's okay. We'll just go here. The reason I'm choosing this way is because I want to be able to use my rook. And so this gives me the option to play rook e1 and activate the rook. If I would have went to f1, uh, the rook is kind of stuck and can't come over. So we'll go here. Um, I did I did miss that one. But, uh, you know, or, oh, okay. And now I'm seeing uh, a checkmate, right? So let's be careful. Uh, good, good attempt by our opponent. I will say that. Also have to be careful of this because sometimes if the queen can sacrifice... Sorry, if a piece can sacrifice, there could be some perpetual checks. I don't think it works in this case, but I also think that I like this move better. So we're just going to defend with the rook. We defend the checkmate, and at the same time, we attack the queen. Remember what I say about you can do two or three things at the same time? That's pretty good. I'm activating a rook, attacking a queen. I'm defending the checkmate. Three nice things all at the same time. So that seems like a pretty nice move. Also, I'm starting to think about this. Like, if this bishop comes out somewhere, uh, the rook would be attacking my queen. So keep that in mind. You know, does black have any tricks, uh, tricky tactics or anything related to that? Okay. Um, looking around, kind of scanning, and I see this move, which looks like a nice fork where I can win the queen. So I don't think I have to think too much uh, past that. We can just go here and take the queen. Okay, and now I'm just kind of looking for pieces that are undefended, and I noticed this one, so we'll take that with check. And let's see, we'll take this with check, and that looks like checkmate next move. So, opponent actually had some nice threats there, I, I missed that queen e4 move, but uh, there you go, and let's go ahead and play a new game. Well, they want a rematch, alright, we'll play them one more time. Play them one more time. Okay, let's try to play um, another interesting opening. Let me think what we should play here. Um, let's play this one. We'll play b6. This is a... Um, what is the name of this opening? I don't actually know what this is called. But we're going to fee and the bishop over here. But we're going to play e6. And this is a, a way that you can set up your pieces if you would like. Uh, okay, let's go e6. And basically what happens is this bishop kind of cuts across the center. And then this bishop a lot of times can go to b4 if the knight comes out, pins the knight, potentially trades for the knight, and you get a lot of control over these two squares. And so, yeah, you're going to see what I'm talking about after I play bishop b4. Eliminating the knight, and what ends up happening is now look at this. We've got these guys they are really controlling. I don't know why um, white did that. They could have taken us. I guess they didn't see that. So we'll just keep taking stuff over here. But... Assuming they would have taken us, we played knight to e4 and kind of get some control uh, of the center that way. Okay, we'll take that. Okay, so watch the threat. Our bishop is under fire. So I think we will simply retreat. We could also play queen e7 to defend, but then it leaves this pawn undefended. And so I think probably the best thing is to just retreat. And we'll castle next move, most likely. Okay, so the rook comes up. And what do I notice? Although well, they're both on the same diagonal. So bishop to c6 looks like it's going to win some material. And I know I said I was going to castle, but my king is pretty safe. I don't have to castle immediately. And because this tactic is available, I think I will go ahead and go for that. All right, and our opponent does resign. Let's play uh, a new opponent now. And let's play, uh, let's see if we can play a different opening here. Let's play d4, and maybe we'll play a London. We'll play a London. I don't really play the London often, but we'll give it a shot. So basically, you play d4, you bring your bishop out, you make this little pawn pyramid kind of deal, and it's very solid. So we're gonna see that uh, here. You don't have a lot of weaknesses when you play the London. And that's one of the reasons why it's, it's a pretty good opening for beginners. And you can basically do the same thing almost every game, pretty much against whatever your opponent is going to do. So lots of, of reasons why you might want to try this if you haven't, if you haven't ever played the London. All right, let's go ahead and put the knight here. So these guys are connected. We can always recapture with this knight. We just have a lot of control over these dark squares, right? You can see how all of our pawns are kind of controlling dark squares. We got the bishop, we got this knight, and 
very very solid um let's put the bishop on three eventually we probably will want to play e4 and keep pushing in the center but that's only when you're ready so you set it up like this first you get all your pieces looking nice and pretty you castle you get your rooks where you want them and then you probably want to think about pushing one of these pawns forward to gain some more space but we will we will wait before we do that all right let's go ahead and castle and i think what i will probably do next okay so it looks to me like our opponent wants to play e5 which is not really a big deal. Um, they can do that and doesn't really bother me too much. I'm going to go ahead and bring the bishop back. This is a move that, you know, sometimes you can plan ahead like I did here. I was going to have to probably move that bishop anyway. And so I went ahead and did it early. And so now that e5 is played, I don't have to worry about that. I can do something else. One of the nice things about the London is you've got so many pawns protecting this d4 square that even if they attack it like this, you can just let them take it and you just recapture, right? And you're fine. So I'm not really worried about that. I do want to make sure that, that E4 is not an option because that would fork my pieces, but there's nothing defending it right now. So I'm not concerned about that. Maybe after F5, then I would have to. Um, but right now that's fine. So I think what I'm going to do, um, let's see, probably going to move my queen just to get out of the pin. I just want to give myself options in case I need to move this knight or something. I don't want it to be pinned. So let me go ahead and move it. Now, where do I want to move it to? Here or here? Let's go here. Just creating the battery, which doesn't do a whole lot at the moment, but um, really I'm just trying to get out of the pin. So that's kind of the idea. Okay. And actually after this move, all of a sudden, this battery now becomes much more um, attractive as far as, I mean, I might even want to sacrifice this right now. Takes, takes, takes. Bishop is going to be under attack. Black's king is weaker. Um, I don't have to do that, but it's something that I'm kind of thinking about. Yeah, and I think I will. I think I will, actually. Um, you know, is this the best trade? No, I'm giving up three points for two. But practically speaking, when you can open up your opponent's king, uh, I think it's a, it's a good, you know, a good thing to think about, especially at lower levels. If you're not like 2,500 or something, you can probably, you'll probably see that you win more games than you lose when you play this way. Okay, so you have the thread here already that black has to deal with. and what I'm going to be doing now is start thinking, okay, they didn't see it. Um, good move otherwise. They're trying to trade queens and control some of those squares. Uh, unfortunately for them, they, they forgot about the bishop. But um, what I was going to say is I was going to try to think through how can I get some more pieces over to the king side to attack. Potentially moving this knight, playing f4, and getting the rook in was one idea. And uh, some other ideas, depending on what black was going to do. But unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to see that. Okay. Is there a threat with this move? I don't really think so. It's not really going there. Uh, pushing this pawn. Okay, I don't really care about that. And so I'm going to continue on uh, with my plan. So I'm going to play... I'm actually going to play d5. And just kind of shut down these, these dark squares if I can. Maybe next move I'll play e4. And the point is this bishop just looks really bad to me. And gaining this, this control of this square looks pretty powerful. So five makes sense to me also secondary idea is it takes away this square from the knight so b4 is actually a threat to trap the knight so a lot of things that that move does are kind of all at the same time okay so c6 um i think the best move is just b4 because the knight that we talked about can't go back you can't go here and so b4 just looks like the most logical move Yes, we will lose a pawn, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to get the knight over here. Okay, and we'll take the knight. All right, so let's count up here. We have one, two, three, four. It's only defended one time. Let's go ahead and take it. And if black, yeah, if black captures, this looks good because of this, this square. You can hop the knight in. But this looks good because then the rook can play a role. So both look good. I'll go with this. Yeah, I'll go with this one, but I could see merits to both of them. This one keeps my pawns looking a little bit nicer. Um, but yeah, both of them looked looked pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and jump in here. It's defended by the queen, and we have a checkmate threat is the big one, but also an attack on the rook. The so rook f7 seems to be 
probably the only move that really saves the game for um, for Black. They didn't see that, forgot about the checkmate, and so we'll go ahead and take that. Okay, good game to our opponent. Let's play a new new one here. And all right, let's play a different opening just to just to mix it up a little bit. Let's play the Scandinavian this this time. And um, there's two lines that I like to play. You can either capture with the queen or you can count. Okay, they didn't even take it. So we'll take here. And this is going to go into like an end game, sort of, not necessarily an end game, but trading queens early, you're more likely to go to an end game. But because white doesn't have castling rights, I think that that makes a lot of sense for us to do. And usually when this queen trade happens, what I like to do is castle queen side as quickly as I can. And I get the tempo of the rook putting the king in check. And so it's like you develop all your pieces and get on the offensive very, very quickly when you do this. You can see already white has to deal with a check to their king. Which, it's not like a super powerful check, to be honest with you. They can just block it and they're fine. But I do like that my king is safe and my rook is already active in the game. So that's, that's kind of what I like about it. Okay, and they do... Play a nice move and defend. Let's just develop our pieces here and, and create some attacks. So we'll attack the pawn on e4. All right, so our opponent sidesteps the pin, but they don't deal with the threat on the pawn. And so we will go ahead and take that. All right, so since we're ahead, I'm leaning towards just trading. Normally, I wouldn't give up my bishop for a knight. But in this case, since I want to trade and kind of simplify some things, I think I will. We already got the pawn, so as we get closer to the end of the game, that's better news for us, and so I am going to go ahead and actually just do this double trade to make that happen as quickly as possible. And I think I will play... Yeah, we'll go knight to d4. It's attacking the bishop, so threatening another trade, also threatening the fork here, and it's just a nice central square for the knight. Okay, bishop check. So how do I deal with this? Well, I could move to the side. But then white has time to do something, maybe defend this. Or I could play this move, f5, which blocks the check but also attacks the bishop. And I still have this threat over here. So it's much more difficult for white to deal with this. Now, they can still play bishop to d1, which would be a nice move for white. Saves the bishop and defends. But then I gain some space with my pawns. I can play e5, and I actually have these two pawns in the center. Okay, they didn't see the fork, and so I will go ahead and do that and take the rook. Okay, I'll take the rook, and let's go ahead and play e5. It's a nice uh, centralized move here. Controls all these squares with my pawns. Also lets out the bishop, and so that's looking great. Okay, this is under attack. I think I will, again, do two things at the same time. e4 uh, saves my pawn from being captured, but also attacks the bishop. And I actually have the bonus here that the bishop is trapped. It only has one place to go over here. Uh, and then I can play g6, and I have this really nice, pretty pawn chain, which is um, totally taking away all the squares from the bishop. So white is in trouble and about to lose, lose this bishop as well. Okay, we'll take the bishop. Yes, we're going to lose a pawn, but bishop is obviously more valuable. All right, and now things have kind of settled down. It's time to finish the development. Where do I want to put this? I don't know, there could be lots of places. Let's go to g7, because we're attacking here. And probably f6, kind of blockading this past pawn, seems like a, a pretty good square for it. And so this is kind of what I'm what I'm leaning towards right now. Okay, so the king comes up. Um, I think what I will do is bring this rook over to defend the pawn. So again, doing two things at the same time, defending the pawn, but also activating a piece that I wasn't really using. Okay, so we have both rooks lined up. And I'm starting to think about moves like rook to d3 check, forcing the king out of there, maybe rook over to f3 check. Yeah, if the king comes up. Um, also, at the end of the game, rooks on the second rank tend to be pretty powerful. So I would like to go here. Of course, I can't because the knight would take me. So maybe b5, and then rook to d2 is a powerful move. Because this is going to be a fork on these two pawns, and the knight is really the only thing stopping that from happening. So let's let's play b5 now. 
I could also just take this pawn once the knight moves, but I think it's going to be more beneficial to me to actually get the rook down there. Um, and then I'm actually going to be threatening to take like all three of those pawns. So yeah, I think that's what we'll do instead. Oh, well, I'll... now that this happened, I'm going to change what I just said. I was going to go here, but because the knight and the rook are positioned this way, this is actually a fork. And so I will go back to the bishop because of that. It's a, you know, just a basic tactic. Um, otherwise, if you imagine, let's just say that the knight would have went like here, I was probably going to bring the rook down instead. Okay. All right, let's play one more game for this video. We're at 550. And um, let's play knight to f3 this game, just kind of mixing it up. Maybe we'll play like a king's Indian type of setup. Okay, let's play g3. King's Indian attack, you fee and kettle this bishop over here. And usually if they have the option to push e4 on you, you want to take that away. So I will play d3 first before I play the bishop. I don't want that pawn to get annoying and face my, my knight away. Okay, bishop to g2, defending. And we will be very happy. I will be very happy to see that. Why? Because now this bishop is very, very difficult for our opponent to deal with. And already we can see, uh, you know, some some... Nice benefits. Even if we didn't have that, though, this was going to be a long-term piece that was going to put a lot of pressure on our opponent. So whenever you play the King's Indian, very happy to see that. Now here, this is a tough decision. Normally, it's a no-brainer, bishop for a rook. When you play the King's Indian, sometimes you actually have problems along these light squares. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do it because I do see a relatively easy way to kind of fix things. So, and but I, you have to be careful. Like for example. If I were to play the move e4 here, black could actually sacrifice. The queen comes in, and all of a sudden I'm getting forked. Now maybe I could survive by going here to unleash the queen, but that looks like a very dangerous position. I don't want to put myself in that. So I'm going to play the move f3. And it's not a move that you would normally play, but in this case I have to because it really deals with this threat very nicely. Okay, And now I think we can play e4 and kind of shut down the queen along that diagonal. Since I've lost my bishop, I want to put some pawns on those light squares to help control those squares, okay? And that's what I'm, I'm doing here. All right, so let's keep developing. We've kind of solidified our weaknesses that black was attacking. Now we want to finish our development. Notice how like a lot of times there's this balancing act of like, okay, I want to develop, but I also have a weakness that I need to deal with. And so you have to kind of go back and forth between like, okay, develop a piece. Okay, deal with this weakness. Okay, develop a piece, deal with this weakness. And that's one of the difficult parts about chess is knowing like exactly when to do what thing. And some people get confused about that. It comes with a lot of practice and exposing yourself to a lot of situations. So here I have a couple of options. Um, I think I will just go ahead and take the pawn for free because it's a free pawn, but also I wanted to develop my bishop anyway. So again, two things at the same time, right? Okay, we're under attack. Probably should save that. Although I see an opportunity here for a nice move. Knight to d5, I'm going to play it. What am I doing? I'm actually counterattacking both of these pawns. This is my main threat, right? Forking these guys. So if this happens, I'm going to get the fork. But if not, I'm going to potentially just take that pawn. And I didn't even have to move my bishop. Now, black can actually save everything by going here, which defends both of these. They find it. So nice job to our opponent. Um, but I got this move kind of for free. And now I can deal with my bishop. So let's actually just retreat. This is a very nice square kind of tucked behind the pawns. The bishop is very well defended. Okay, good move by my opponent. I do have to retreat. Uh, you know, unfortunately, everything is kind of covered. And so the best thing for me to do now is just to go back. Okay, um, let's finish developing. Let's put the queen up. And now we are ready to castle both directions and go from there. Okay, and opponent does not see the bishop, and so we will take that. And all right, let's continue on. I'm going to go ahead and castle. Sometimes you have to be careful when your pawns have been moved forward, but in this case, the queen is doing a nice job of defending. On top of that, you know, black blundered the queen, so we don't have to worry about that. And so I'm much more comfortable castling on a side where my pawns have been moved forward. Otherwise, maybe it would have been better to go this way. Other reason here is I'm thinking about playing a move like f4 and capturing to unleash my rook. And I just like the fact that when I castle, my rook is automatically on the f file. So that I think makes a lot of sense. And yeah, I will go ahead and go forward with that plan. 
to f4, trying to open up the rook. So we have all these major pieces. We can't really use them right now because uh, the files are closed. And so the best way to open things up is to just trade a bunch of pawns. And then once the files are open, you can use those valuable pieces. All right, so I am going to keep an eye on my king and plan a little bit for this. But uh, it looks to me like I can tuck my king in the corner and I'll be just fine. So I'm not super concerned about that. I think I am going to continue forward with opening up the position so that I can, you know, do stuff like this. Okay. Conan is attacking this a lot, which is actually not a bad plan. I'll give that to them. Um, and let's see, how do we want to do this? Do I want to defend? Do I want to just ignore that and go on the offensive? I do have a lot of pieces attacking F4. Pretty funny. Um, yeah, I think what I will do... Um, yeah, I think actually we'll defend. No, actually. Hmm, tricky position. I'm just noticing they can actually take here and it's pinned. How about that? All right. Uh, with that in mind, I'm just going to take this. I just want to open this file up so that I can start attacking. Yes, I'm going to lose this, but uh, we do get some nice counterplay here with the rook coming over. And the nice thing about this is I can always tuck my king in the corner, which is a very safe square for my king. There's no light squared bishop, there's no queen. And there, there's really no way for black to attack my king if I go there. So that's kind of my backup move and why I'm not really concerned by this. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, what do we want to do? I think we can invade with the rook. This will happen. Uh, what's the follow-up? Or I can simply bring my knight over and start attacking this way. Let's do that. Oh, there, oh, there is a check here. Just saw that one. So because of that, I am going to go ahead and move my king. I'm going to get out of that um, tactic where I will lose my queen. Very nice move by my opponent there. Um, yeah, that I that I kind of missed, actually. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, I think now is a safe time to bring the knight over. We're attacking this. And uh, In some cases, maybe I would come back here if I needed to, to defend or something, but probably just this is the main threat. Okay, so we've got the discovered check. Let's see how we can make the most of this here. Probably, you know, this is a tough position only because there's like lots of threats from the knights and the bishops and the rook. And when you're in a position like that where you're trying to figure out how to defend and there's a lot going on, the best thing to do, I've said it many times, is trade pieces. So what I'm looking for here with this discovered check that I have is how can I force some trades? And I see a way to do that. I'm going to play here with check from the rook. And next move, I'm going to trade here. Actually, it's more than a trade because I have the follow up bishop there. But even if it was just a trade, I would be happy to do that. So that's what we're going to go with. Okay, and here we go. We've got the check and we do have the follow up here. The knight actually can't move though because of the pin. And so finally, a black's position falls apart. They did a nice job. I have to say, they did a nice job of, of launching an attack, even after losing their queen and, and rook early. So props to my opponent for, for making that happen. Okay, and there's the resignation. All right, 5.57. I'm going to end the video here. I'll see you guys next time. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. Stay sharp. Play smart. Take care.